Hey there, Apana here, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to be working on moonwalking, walking, crouching, running, all the extra states that are needed for our character to be able to run well. I'm also going to be fixing some of the errors that I made in the other videos when it comes to stuff like animations and nodes and stuff like that. And before I dive into the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and like if you're enjoying the series, and check out the Patreon where there's going to be some bonus content on there and access to the folders and files. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to go into our state machine. In the state machine, we're going to add in a few new states, with these being the moonwalking, turning, running, walking, and crouching states. Alright, so these are all the states that you're going to need to add. Just in case you haven't seen the last video, you want to add the dash, run, walk, moonwalk, turn, crouch. These are the states that we're going to be working on, even the dash and some, and even the standing state. So make sure you've added these states. Okay, so once you're done with that, scroll down to the states and we're going to add in the new states that we didn't have before. So in case you don't have these other states, like moonwalk, crouch, walk, add them in. Uh, the ones I'm going to add in is the running state and the turn state. So for the running state, what we're going to need to do is go over here and copy in this code. I'll explain all the code in the middle of the video after I'm done copying and pasting it so that you can write it all out. But for the running state, you want to add this as the code. As for the turn state, you just want to add this code. You can pause the video right here and write it all out. If you don't want to pause the video and write it all out, then you can go to the Patreon where all of the code for all of the game that we programmed up until this point is available and so you can save yourself some time and also fix some errors that you might have made in copying this tutorial. As for the moonwalk state, this is what it's going to look like. Again, I'm going to explain this in a sec, so pause the video and copy the code. And if you don't want to pause the video and copy the code, go to the Patreon, you're going to have access to all the code, all the files for four pounds or five dollars so yeah you can go there if you don't want to pause the video and copy all of this stuff out another thing that we need to do for the moonwalk state is for us to go to the fox script and add in some new on ready nodes all right and once you've finished copying down this code line 19 and 20 I'm just going to give you a few seconds scroll down and go maybe under the turn function and write out this function. So this is the function that you need to copy from line 55 to line 59. And I'm gonna explain what this all does when I get to the part where I explain what each of these states do. One more thing we actually have to do as well is to add in these lines of code. So once you've added in this function, you then want to add in this code to this previous function that we made in the other videos. Next is the walk state. Here's the code. You can pause the video and copy it, or go to the Patreon and get it instantly. And lastly, here's the crouch state. So here's the code. I'm gonna paste that. Let me just make this tidy. But yeah, here's the code for the crouch state. You can copy this. And I say this again for the last time. If you don't want to have to pause and copy all of this stuff out, you can go to the Patreon where you can get access to all the folders and files and scripts, all for $5 or £4 depending on where you live. Okay, so scrolling down to the animations, we now need to put in the animations for each of the states that we've just added. So I'm going to put them underneath the dash state since I'm going to separate this into the grounded states and then for these being states that relate to the air. So, I'm going to make a gap and then you're going to need to copy and paste all of this code from line 258 to 247. Alright, and lastly with the state machine script, we now need to go back into the other states and add the transition from one state to another. So for example, if you're standing, you want to be able to go into the crouching state, but we currently don't have any code for that. So let's say under the jump, 
uh, jump code that we made we can have a code like this that says if you press down then you go to the states of crouch likewise for you to start moonwalking the way moonwalking works in games like rivals, rivals of aether is that whilst you're in the dash state which is over here whilst you're in the dash state if you press down you will enter the moonwalk state so i can show you the code for that as well so for the dash state this is the code that you're going to want to copy it is pretty much the same as before so if i zoom in then you should be able to see all of it it is pretty much the same as before but I've added in some code that says that if you press down, you enter the moonwalk state. I've also made it so that it's possible for you to jump during your dash state. Because before in the last tutorial, when you were dashing, you wasn't able to jump out of it. I'll explain what all of this code means once I'm done giving you all of it. But yeah, you want to copy all of this. Alright, so moving on to one more thing that we must do for our moonwalk state to work. We need to go to the 2D scene of our character click on ledge grab F and we want to position this around Fox's eye so it should look something like this give it a cast Y of 0 a cast X of 20 you might want to go to the transform and then go 22 minus 14 and if the scale you do 3 3 this looks about right so enable this and make the collision mask be on layer 4 now for the other ray cast for ledge grab B, we're gonna put this on level four. Enable, go to transform and put this to like minus 38. And again, you want this to be a scale of three three. Uh, a Y cast of zero and an X cast of minus 11. And this is what works for the Fox character. So if you have your own character, ledge grab F, needs to be somewhere around the eyes of your character and let's grab B should be around uh, just a bit above around the head of your character this is basically how your character is going to be able to grab the ledge in future videos I'll talk about grabbing ledges and stuff like that but this ray cast here is going to allow the character to grab the ledge from behind and then this is going to allow the character to grab the ledge from in front one more thing I noticed as well from the last video that I actually made a mistake on when it came to the animations was if you go to the animation player and then you go to the dash, this animation is actually in 10 frames per second. So if I go to FPS and I do 10, yeah, this should be 10 frames per second and this should last for two frames. And so the way it, works, the way it should look like is like this. Apart from that, I don't think there's anything else that needs correcting. So now, apart from all of the stuff I've just shown you, there's nothing else to this tutorial really. You can skip to the part where I demonstrate that the code works and I show you how everything works and what I'm going to do for the next video. But from here on out, I'm going to go into the state machine and explain what all of these states do for those of you that actually want to understand what all of this code means. So I'll start with the standing state. Now when it comes to the standing state, the only change we really made was over here from line 38 to 40 where it says that if you press the down button you're good to crouch this is so that when you when you're standing and you want to crouch you can crouch and i think that's pretty much the only change moving on to jump squat nothing has changed short hop full hop nothing has changed when it comes to dash previously you couldn't go into the moonwalk state and i don't think there was any code for you to jump so we've added in this code that says if you press the jump button, reset the parent's frame timer to zero and put the player into the jump squat state. Now as for the moonwalking, this is a bit complicated but I had to re-watch a bunch of footage of Ralph's the Aether to actually understand what was going on. The way moonwalking works in Ralph's the Aether, at least from what I could tell, was if let's say you dash into the right or if let's say you're dashing to the left as this is what this is showing if you're dashing to the left but you're moving to the right then you're going to reset the frame timer then it's going to make your velocity in the x direction equal to minus, minus dash speed minus means you're moving in the left direction so if you're pressing left you're going to move to the left but at the same time if you're pressing the left 
and your frame timer currently is less than the dash deviation so this if you're pressing left whilst you're within the dash deviation and then you're also pressing down then you enter the moonwalk state if not if let's say you're just pressing left whilst you're in the dash state then your character will turn around and then you will go back into the dash state and it will check whether or not you're holding to the left if you're holding to the left and you're moving to the left then it's going to turn into run because at that point if you're in the dash state and you're still holding left and you're moving to the left then you run and the right direction is the same thing vice versa and what this code is basically saying here is that once your frame timer has reached your, da your dash deviation and, and the current state is not jump squat then you're going to enter the standing state that's pretty much it running is pretty similar to dashing you have you have the ability to jump uh, there's no moonwalking so if you press crouch whilst you're running you simply just crouch and it's the same thing if you're pressing to the left and your velocity is to the left or is equal to zero then you will run to the left and then you'll turn around if you're pressing left but you're moving to the right then you will enter the turn state so if you're moving to the right and you press left whilst you're running then you enter the turn state and moving to the right is vice versa and if you stop pressing anything whilst you're running you go into the standing state turning Turning is something that's actually quite important in fighting games, specifically platform fighting games. This is the state you enter once you are running, but you want to change direction. This turn state is what kind of makes you skid along uh, across the floor when you want to change direction. And so you can actually jump out of your turn state. This is something I added. You don't have to actually add that. But it's saying here that if you're moving in the right direction, remember, anything positive when it comes to the X direction is right. Anything negative is to the left. So, if you're moving in the right direction, then, and you enter the turn state, then you're gonna turn is gonna be equal to true. So, by default, your character faces to the right. If turning is true, then your character's gonna turn to the left. And so, all of this code is basically just using Fox's variables to say that the character is gonna move to the left. Or actually, what this is saying is that our character is gonna slow down. So, we're moving to the right. So now our velocity is going to decrease by this traction. And we're saying that when and when you clamp something, by the way, clamp is very, very important. Clamp has three inputs. You have the first input, the second input, and the third input. The first input is what you want to clamp. The second input is the, the lower range. And the right input, or the last input, is the higher range. So when you have a range, you have a beginning and an end. And so what this is saying is that we want to clamp the velocity of the fox character in the x direction and we want to clamp the the velocity in the x direction and we want it to be so that actually this might be turned around let me just check real quick yeah so minimum maximum so what we're saying here is the the lowest velocity that the character can have in the x direction is zero whilst the highest it can have is the current velocity all this is saying is that when this code is being executed we don't want this to execute to the point where our character can it starts moving in the opposite direction if that makes sense i should have like a video footage showing what i'm describing so if you didn't have this and you turn around your character would your character would be able to turn around and continue moving in the direction that is turned around in without you pressing anything which is not good and so the same thing over here vice versa and so what i'm saying here is if your character is staying still and uh, they're not and you're and you're not pressing left or right then you enter the stand state or else you'll be in the running state moonwalking moonwalking is actually quite interesting during the moonwalk state you can jump so that's what this code is saying in the moonwalk state the way this works is, is saying that if your car if you are pressing the left button whilst you're facing to the right whilst you're in the moonwalk state then your velocity was well, going to first check if your velocity is higher than zero which means if your character is moving to the right and if it is then you're going to reset the frame and so this is pretty much the same as the turning state except there is no real limit to how far the character can go except for its dash speed so let me dive further into this this is saying that if you're pressing to the left your character will start moving to the left but it won't move to the left with an increasing acceleration as you can see over here instead what the character is going to do is it's going to be clamped so that the highest speed that the character can move at is its current velocity but the lowest speed that it can move at is its dash speed from here i am just de defining the range 
for how long can the character be in the moonwalk state and so I'm, I just decided to make it the dash duration times 2 but what this is saying is that if you're if we're currently within this that dash duration times 2 which should be 24 fox our character won't turn around and you will continue to be in the moonwalk state notice how I didn't put parent dot frame I don't want the frame timer to reset however if our current frame is higher than the dash duration times 2 we want our character to turn around and to enter the standing state also to reset the frames and it's vice versa for the right direction if you're not pressing left or right whilst you're in the moonwalk state it's going to check if our character is past the dash duration and it's basically just going to return the standing state the walking state is actually something that I haven't created a transition into but this is something that you can create on your own if you've been following the other uh, explanations of the code. The walk state is pretty much the same as the running state but instead of running you're walking and the animation is a bit different but the code is logically the same. And for crouching it's pretty much the same as the standing state but if you release the down button you enter the standing state and all of this traction and stuff is much higher than if you're standing. So if you're running and then you let go of run you will skid along you will skid alongs the floor a bit longer than if you were to just press crouch and so i hope this explanation was thorough enough i don't think there's anything else needed to explain and so i'm gonna finish this part of the video all right and so now that i'm done showing you all the code i can finally demonstrate what the game looks like now with all these new states so i have the fox character within this test stage that we created in the first video or second video now we can play it and as you can see my character now runs and when my character runs he can turn around and from turning around he can go back into a run and or he can jump as you can see um i need to demonstrate the moonwalking so the way moonwalking works is doing your dash state which is this if you press down and then press the other direction you start moonwalking and it works the other way as well now there's a, there is a glitch with the moonwalking that looks a bit funny but if you press the direction and immediately try to moonwalk it will look like that you don't move forward at all and so that's something i found i don't know if this is something i should try and fix but um yeah that's that's a uh, something else right there there's actually a problem i just realized if i uh, moonwalk off the stage i actually don't fall you see that that is something I can fix right now. All I have to do is go to the state machine, scroll down, and where is it? add to this list of states that if you're not on the ground, then you go into the air state. So I can do, all right, so as you can see over here, we've included more states. All this code says is that if, the, if you're in these states and you're not touching the ground, you're basically just gonna start falling. And so now, if I moonwalk near the ledge, the edge of the stage, I should fall immediately. There you go. And so that calls it for the rest of this tutorial. And that should be it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to go through adding multiple jumps in the air. So double jumps, triple jumps, unlimited jumps. And adding some ledge states. So stuff like ledge catch, ledge grab, ledge roll, ledge jump, ledge release. All of these things, even ledge attack. But we can't do attacks yet since we haven't added hitboxes. So that reminds me, after the next video, I can either make the video be about hitboxes or adding stage art. Stage art would be quicker and easier to do since I don't have to implement code and explain it. So if you have a particular preference, go in the comment section and write down what your preference will be. And I'll have a look, if not, then I'll decide. Um, apart from that, subscribe and like if you enjoyed the series. If you're enjoying the series and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to check out the Patreon as well since the Patreon gives you access to all the files and folders that I've been producing throughout this tutorial series. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.